Hello and welcome to In-Depth. I'm Tina Jha. On Wednesday, the 4th of March, the Enforcement Directorate earned as much as 2.04 crore rupees after auctioning of prized assets of fugitive diamond merchant Nirav Modi and his wife, Emmy. Considering that the Enforcement Directorate had just expected to realize about 50 lakh rupees, the auction proved largely successful. The ED had appointed auction house Saffron Art for the sale. More importantly, by going for an e-auction, it managed to earn maximum revenue from the sale, thereby demonstrating the efficacy of the e-auction route once again. Almost all items that were up for auction surpassed the estimates. These auctions come a year after Saffron Art auctioned 68 seized artworks belonging to Nirav Modi on behalf of the Income Tax Department in March last year, raising about 54 crore rupees from 55 lots. On this edition of In-Depth, we'll talk about online auction. Why is e-auction conducted and how does it work? We'll also take a look at the prized assets of fugitive Nirav Modi and his wife that went under the hammer. In one of the most successful online auctions ever in the country, the Enforcement Directorate on Wednesday generated a whopping 2.29 crore rupees by selling 72 luxury items seized from Dimenter Nirav Modi. Saffron Art conducted the auction on behalf of the ED on the orders from the Mumbai High Court. Nirav Modi is accused of defrauding the Punjab National Bank of 13,600 crore rupees along with his uncle Mehul Choksi. On February 4, 2020, fugitive diamond businessman Nirav Modi's cars, sculptures and personal objects of value, including watches and designer handbags, went under the hammer. The auction was conducted by Saffron Art on behalf of the Enforcement Directorate, Mumbai. Titled Spring Online Auction, it closed with all lots sold at a total value of 2.29 crore rupees. The Enforcement Directorate called it the most successful online auction in India. All the 72 lots of luxury items were sold, some 10 to 15 times more than the estimate. According to ED sources, over 2,000 bids were received for the auction that was in operation for 24 hours. The civic body said bids came from across the world with over 700 advance bids. So it's a good process, especially, you know, when it comes to the auction of seizured properties, because, you know, what would happen earlier, the people who would be interested in those properties would be like subjected to fear and, you know, threats by these bullies that, you know, uh, like if somebody, uh, I remember there was a building which belonged to one of the Daud associates, that building, despite of going into auctioning, never found any buyer because everybody who wanted to buy was scared. And those who had courage to buy, they were threatened with life and dire consequences. But when you go for e-bidding, all these harassment and pressure tactics cannot work. So definitely in the entire country of 125 crore people, you will find some buyer. Top items that were auctioned included a Porsche Panamera that was driven by Nirav Modi's wife Ami Modi. Car went for 36 lakh rupees, although the initial estimate for the car was only 10 lakh rupees. A gold Cartier wristwatch went for 36 lakh rupees. This was around 16 times more than the estimate of 2 lakh rupees. A Louis Vuitton tall cabin trunk sold for 8.62 lakh rupees as against an initial estimate of 70,000 to 90,000 rupees. A Cartier Art Deco travel desk clock which was pegged at 5,000 to 10,000 rupees sold at 2.43 lakh rupees. The winning bid for a Swatch limited edition watch case that was released as a Christmas special in 1991 was 76,720 rupees. It was 58 times more than its estimate price of 500 to 1000 rupees. E-auction is the internet form of the regular auctions which used to happen. So you have a um, article up for sale or you have a contract which needs to be achieved which is put on display people are informed and then the vendors or the stakeholders reach out and place their bid this can be done in two forms 
One is a live e-auction where we are competing in a real time. The other is which is done in a passive form that all of us send our bids and the best bid is decided. Um, the good part about e-auctions is that it increases transparency. There is less of, um, uh, so to say, human bias in an e-auction. Um, but in a country like India, we need to realize only 40% of citizens have access to the internet. Now, the remaining 60% are on a big, big disadvantage if they are unable and if the way of auction is only going to be electronic. The auction was held after the Bombay High Court on March 4, 2020, refused to stay the process. All of which has brought the focus on what are called e-auctions. The Nirav Modi e-auction is just one example of how successful e-auctions have been in raising revenue. Earlier this week, Union Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan disclosed that Odisha could mop up an incremental 20,000 crore rupees each year owing to the transparent system of awarding mineral blocks through the e-auction route. State Bank of India is also taking the same route to recover amounts from small retail and industrial properties whose owners are defaulting. The property details are being only given to the registered bidders after they logged into the demarcated website and deposited the earnest money and submitted KYC documents along with the digital signature. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Ever since the Supreme Court pulled up the government for arbitrary coal block allocations, the government has been using e-auctions to sell assets, natural resources and several other goods. Online competitive bidding has several advantages. Not only do they help the authorities discover the most accurate price, they also open the field for dedicated buyers. Let's now consider in detail what other advantages it allows. Online or e-auctions have increased rapidly since the late 1990s. Growth of internet applications provided a further boost. The biggest advantage of an e-auction over a physical auction is complete transparency. It also allows participation from the widest possible range of prospective bidders. Moreover, e-auctions are fair, unlike physical auctions, where human intervention can game the processes. E-auctions reduce the scope for unfair practices like bid rigging and bribes to bag allotments. E-auctions initiated by buyers use the internet to share communication. This reveals the status of the bid to both the buyers and suppliers in real time and makes instant response possible. E-auctions are also used to renew existing contracts or offer consolidated spending opportunities. They also help in negotiating significant spot purchases. E-auctions are a widely accepted business model for the following reasons. No fixed time constraint, flexible time limits, no geographical limitations, offer highly intensive social interactions, include a large number of sellers and bidders which encourage a high volume online business. First and foremost benefit is transparency. Second is accessibility to all, knowledge to all. Uh, you know earlier you would see 15 years ago if government department was auctioning something, especially you know the things which were seized by the customs department at airports and stuff, random people will you know bribe certain uh, babus and they will have some sort of setting and 15 people will come and bid and they will all you know be conniving with each other and you know prefixing the bid sort of it and they will take away the 100 rupee material and 50 rupees 60 rupees and then bribe 20 rupees to the and that was the system where the leakage was happening the moment you go for e auctioning a it is not only known to those 15 racketeers it is known to hundreds and thousands of people across the country every state every district in India, the National Informatics Centre of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has developed e-auction software to conduct auctions of government departments and organisations. The system can easily be adopted for all kinds of auction activities. It aims at transparency and non-discrimination amongst bidders, allows them free access to auction documents, clarifications, secure online submission of quotes from any place on a 24-7 basis. The system has been designed taking into account auction rules followed in various states across the country. In order to ensure valid participation, 
Bidder credentials are verified using two-factor authentication, including the username, password, and digital signature certificate. The auction documents, as well as bid documents submitted by the bidder, are also digitally signed. In addition, all bid values are digitally signed to ensure authenticity and integrity of the document. It is an absolutely transparent process. There is no fear, there is no favour. Earlier it used to happen that you know people would threaten certain guys that you don't file for this tender, you don't bid for this auction, otherwise I will come in. Especially in you know states like Bihar which had law and order situation at one point of time, it was very rampant and prevalent. But since you have an e-auction, nobody can come to know who is bidding, who is not bidding. So it is an absolutely 100% a, a, a transparent process without fear and favour. Second, earlier you know there were instances within there were allegations that a person who was the you know auction in charge or the person who was appointed uh, he would have connived with certain people, he would have leaked the bid amounts or he would have, you know, favoured certain people. Now in e-auction, all those things cannot happen. Nobody knows who is bidding what, you only know the amount and whoever bid, who bids the highest amount or whatever is the auction format gets uh, the bid. Two years ago, the sporting world in India got to see an e-auction in action. It was also the first time that it was being used by the Board of Control for Cricket in Indian Sports. BCCI used it to sell Indian cricket's media rights. The e-auction helped it net 60% more than 3,851 crore rupees that Star India had paid for the previous deal. Instead of the earlier practice where different players submitted bids in sealed envelopes, the three parties in the fray, Star India, Sony Pictures Network and Reliance Geo were locked in a slugfest for three days. Also, instead of meet minimum bid increases of 25 crore rupees, Star India made a straight jump of 900 crore rupees plus, a move that allowed it to show intent right away. E-auctions do away with nepotism and under-the-table deals when the state's assets are sold off. That's one huge blow against corruption. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for a short break here on the program. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. At what level do you see India and the United States collaborating on trade and commerce? I think from a business community perspective, we know that we need to do our job too. Uh, and so, you know, I'm here meeting with uh, stakeholders in Indian industry to talk about what the future looks like for both our countries. But how big a problem do you think protectionism is? Yeah, you know, at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, we don't like protectionism. Uh, we, we think that trade is an economic multiplier. At what level are India and the United States collaborating on IP? Well, today, you know, the mindset is we are innovators, we are creators. We're making in India, making for India, but also delivering to the world. And that's a different mindset, and it requires a different orientation on intellectual property. Watch a special interview with Patrick Kilbride, the Vice President of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, at these times on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching In Depth. We are talking about e-auction today. Besides the basic types of e-auctions, there are two main models that are followed while conducting an online auction the common value model and the private value model. So let's now understand in detail these models, the bidding techniques involved in an e-auction and the legalities of the process behind it. There are two main models for conducting online auctions, the common value model and the private value model. Under the common value model, all individual bidders have different information about the actual value of the object, even though the value is known to every bidder. In this situation, bidders typically change their estimates of the value according to the information they get from the behaviour of the people they bid against. In the private value model, information from competitors is not taken into account when estimating the actual value of the object. 
In this model, each bidder gets a private signal and the value to the bidder is a function of all these signals. Besides these two models of auction, there are various techniques that are followed by bidders. These include auction squatting, auction sniping and beginning with a high bid. Auction squatting is a technique involving placing early bids and then watching the auction until the very end. The main tactic followed in auction squatting is that this bidder looks for other bids in order to be able to match them as fast as possible and more often than any other competitor. The aim is to send the signal that you are serious about the auction, thus scaring off the rest of the bidders. Auction sniping is a strategy involving waiting up until the last seconds of an online auction and then submitting your bid with a goal of stealing the auction from everyone else. However, this technique cannot be performed at every online auction as most auctioners will extend time if a bid comes in with only a few seconds left. Despite this precaution used by auction sites, sniping is still a very successful tool used to win. Many times bidders put in a high bid at the very beginning of the auction instead of starting off with low bids. Low bids might achieve a lower price but they also leave the field open for more bidders. So directly stating a higher value for the object being auctioned can intimidate and lessen the competition. If it is perfectly legal, if it is approval has been sought from the competent authority and the you know basic structures have been taken care of. For example, it has to be a transparent auction, it has to be notified to everyone in the public platforms, it has to be uh, serviceable throughout the period of auction, uh, the auction has to be secure, there should be no tampering of the bids uh, on the platform. So security of the entire platform, accessibility of the entire platform and after seeking the approval of competent authority, it is a perfectly legal process. And this is the new age India, I mean not only auctions, even procurements are happening online now. Online auctions break down and remove physical limitations of traditional auctions like geography, presence, time, space and a small target audience. Even though it opens the field, the influx in reachability also makes it easier to commit unlawful actions within an auction. Some of these include shill bidding, shield bidding, fraud and sale of stolen goods. Shill bidding means placing fake bids that benefits the seller of the item. This is an oft-used method in online auctions and is seen as an unlawful act as it unfairly raises the final price of the auction so that the winning bidder ends up paying more than they would have. If the shill bid is unsuccessful, the item owner needs to pay the auction fees. Shield bidding involves a buyer using another account known as the shield to discourage other competitors from bidding. They do this by artificially increasing the price and then at the last moment withdrawing their bid to allow the actual buyer to win the auction with a lower price. Online auction sites have found a way around this method by disallowing the withdrawal of bids. With the increase in popularity of online auctions has come an increase in fraudulent activity. This is usually done by auction websites when they create appetizing auctions such as a low starting amount. Once the winning bidder makes the payment, the fraudulent seller will either not pursue with the delivery or send a less valuable version of the purchased item. Certainly, um, establishing online identity is a very major um, hurdle that most e-auction platforms go through. Uh, the government has just launched an e-auction platform and it would be interesting to see uh, what are the documents or the data required from the user to log in. Also, uh, what about the bandwidth? How many users can the e-auction platform handle at one time? Is it built for 100 users, 1000, 10,000, 1 million? In a country like India, we need to have the largest numbers of uh, uh, users which can use the platform at one given time. Sometimes online auction websites are used by thieves or fences to sell stolen goods. Organized criminals often steal in-demand items, selling them online as it is a safer option due to the anonymity and worldwide market it provides. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, as the name suggests, online auction or e-auction is an auction held over the internet to sell assets, natural resources and several other goods. 
Over the years, online auction has replaced physical auction due to its biggest advantage, which is complete transparency. Our next report looks at the different types of online auctions and also their characteristics. E-auction or online auction is used to sell assets, natural resources or other goods through online competitive bidding. So what does a typical e-auction involve? First, the value of the asset being auctioned is a certain and a floor price is worked out. Floor price is the minimum amount that will be acceptable by the seller. Then those interested in participating have to register themselves on the seller's online platform. Thereafter, earnest money is collected from the shortlisted buyers. Once the e-auction commences, participants submit their bids during the specified period without having to be physically present at a particular place. Once the auction closes, a report is generated and the winners are intimated. Successful bidders deposit the balance amount, after which they are issued a delivery order against which they can take delivery of the asset or resource from the seller. Well, they were started in the United States, the, the, the primary uh, country with the internet uh, came over to Europe and now they are being used by most of the countries um, because of the reasons I stated earlier that they are transparent and also uh, it ensures that many more people can interact with it. Uh, with the internet as your platform, uh, you do not have any boundaries. Uh, so across regions, across countries, you can have participants from all over who are participating in it. That's why e-auctions have gained popularity. Also, they are cost effective. Without the requirement of a physical space, you can do it in a really easy manner. Over the years, several variants of e-auction have evolved. A classic reverse auction involves multiple sellers competing for the buyer's business. The buyer can see all the offers and choose the preferred one. The English auction is when bids are announced by either an auctioner or the bidders and winners pay what they bid to receive the object. It is the most straightforward form of e-auction, intuitive, user-friendly and also helps reduce transaction costs. The Dutch auctions start at a high price, which is then incrementally lowered until a buyer accepts the price. The first person to bid wins the auction, which makes them good for quick decisions. Japanese auctions is where the buyer sets a high price, which decrements at preset amounts at preset intervals. If a supplier is happy to provide the goods and services at the selected price, the transaction then goes ahead. There are primarily two types of e-auctions. One is a closed and the other one is open. And the difference is the people participating. In a closed e-auction, the participants are pre-vetted. That means they have a certain amount of credit limit, their identity has been formed earlier, they have been um, classified as proper users who can participate in it. Whereas an open e-auction is where you have an open website, anybody, any user can come, create a profile and start bidding. Online auctions benefit both buyers and suppliers. Because the process is transparent in nature, the e-auction results are all documented and auditable. It encourages the buyer to be impartial and awards results on the best bid. It helps in the discovery of the best market price. By giving suppliers the opportunity to rebid, the true market value of the product or service is achieved. By encouraging suppliers to bid regardless of location, it makes it simpler to involve suppliers aboard in the process. By providing better standards of specification, in the absence of ad hoc meetings with suppliers, the buyer is forced to improve written specifications to give suppliers an equal specification of what is required. And lastly, by providing the best value rather than cheapest price, the technology now enables a range of factors to be considered as well as the unit price. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So that's it from us on the show today. But just in case you miss the television broadcast, you can also watch it online on YouTube and Twitter. And you can also send us your feedback and suggestions about our program. Thank you for your time.